stand and we welcome you at home and invite you to join us in worshiping our risen Lord this morning. Oh, she died so to say, I 
says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and the great commandment and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets Lord have mercy upon us Christ have mercy upon us Lord have mercy upon us <laughs> With you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. 
Let us pray. Well, God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to die upon the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the devil and the power of death. Give us hope, give us grace, and give us strength, Lord. Help us in this dark hour not to see the darkness, but, Lord, to see the glorious light of the resurrection of Christ shining through us. Grant us grace to die daily to sin, that we may live with him in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 118, verses 14 to 17 and 22 to 24. Let us say it responsibly by half voice. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The voice of joy and deliverance is in the dwellings of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The same stone which the builders refused has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 10. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. You, will, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning with from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one anointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. A reading is from John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where he, they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And
and stooping to look in, he saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had laid, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. There's a lot of bad news going around, bad news being shared, some of it extremely bad. Imagine on a personal level being told you have an incurable disease and two months to live. News like that hits us like being hit in the back of the head with a sledgehammer. You go home from the doctor's office in shock, unable to sleep. The next day goes by in a timeless blur. Your mind is overwhelmed trying to process what you've heard. Now imagine on the third day, you get a phone call from the doctor's office apologizing that they've mixed up your test results with someone else's. And you're perfectly healthy. And you're going to live a normal life. What kind of shift would happen in your thinking, your heart, and your soul at that moment? I think that's somewhat similar mentally to what happened to the first disciples from Good Friday Easter Sunday, except they had witnessed their teacher and friend truly be tortured and viciously crucified and die. Some of them had seen his corpse. This was traumatic, and they were suffering traumatic stress, and their despair was profound beyond words. They had put all of their hope in this teacher from Nazareth, and now they see him laying dead. But then Sunday comes. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb and finds a stone rolled away in the tomb empty. She hears grave robbers, for his enemies have moved the body of Jesus. She runs and tells Peter and John. They run and find the tomb just as Mary had told them. They have no choice except to believe what Mary told them in terms of an empty tomb because they're seeing it with their own eyes. Mary had followed them back to the tomb, and then we pick up the story in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 13 to start with. Peter and John had just left the tomb, Mary standing there alone, and we read, 
But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, what are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. Mary obviously does not recognize that she's talking with angels. She's still in deep despair. She's grieving, believing that someone has moved the dead body of her beloved Rabbi Jesus. She thinks their question, woman, why are you crying, is an honest question trying to get information. She fails to understand that what they mean is, why in the world are you crying when he's alive? Then she has an even greater failure in recognition. She turns and she sees a man standing there. Now, was she crying so hard that she didn't see clearly? Or was the man wearing a hood to cover his face? But it is Jesus. But Mary thinks it's the gardener. In verses 14 and 15, we read, having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where they have laid him, and I will take him away. Grieving love is a powerful thing. Mary is ready to do anything to properly care for the dead body of her precious teacher, not realizing that it's he who's alive and standing right in front of her. Now, did Jesus have a tender smile and a twinkle in his eyes as he said, Mary? I think so. We can't say for sure, but I think it's very possible. But something in the way that he said her name awakened Mar Mary's memory, and she suddenly realized this is Jesus. She had heard him say her name so often. Remember our Lord's words? I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know my voice. Mary knew his voice when he said her name. She recognizes the voice of Jesus. He is alive. Now try to imagine what runs through Mary's mind in an instant. What? Who? How can it be? It, it can't be. It is. Jesus. Rabboni, meaning teacher. As her heart catches up with her mind, she shifts from despair to rapturous joy. And in her childlike love for Christ, she falls at his feet, washing his feet with tears of joy. Now our Lord's words in verse 17 be hard to understand. In the King James Version, it can sound very harsh. Mary is grabbing his feet, crying in joy, and the King James translates, touch me not. I believe what Jesus says is very tenderly. He says, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended. I don't believe that he abruptly and harshly chastised her, but instead with compassion, he knew that it was time to teach her uh, an important lesson that would be hard for her right now. Now, some think that Jesus ascended into heaven before the next Sunday when he invited Thomas to touch him. And during that visit to heaven that he presented his blood as an atonement for a sin, but scripture never says that it happened in that kind of chronological order. The time frame probably is not correct. The best translation of verse 17 is probably, do not keep clinging to me. Do not keep clinging to me. The Reformation Study Bible gives us insight, I think, to what Jesus probably had in mind. It says, Jesus reminds Mary that he is not merely recovered, but resurrected. She did not cling to Jesus as an earthly being who has been resuscitated, to be resuscitated, Rather, she should recognize him as one whose resurrection marks him as Lord in Christ, who is soon to ascend to his Father's right hand in heaven. The kind of relationship with him that had been enjoyed by his friends up to now cannot continue unchanged. There's a continuing intimacy, to be sure, but not of the former kind. The idea may be something like this. Mary, we can't go back to how things were before I died. I've accomplished the purpose for which I was born and the Father sent me. I am now the first fruits from the dead. I am fully resurrected. My body is alive, but changed, different, glorified. I'm going back to the Father soon. 
but will always be with you but in a different way than I've been with you up to now. What was Jesus teaching? Packed in these few words is the marvelous truth that Jesus is now forever human, but he is now the pioneer of a new kind of humanity. A humanity set free from sin and free from mortality and death. Mary had to think that Jesus being alive meant that he was going to stay with them. Things were going to go back to like they, they were before. He was going to travel with them and go from town to town teaching, or better yet, maybe he was going to set up the kingdom of David right here and right now. So Jesus is saying, stop holding on to me like that, because things are going to be different. The resurrection was something really new, something radically new. Not a few up to this time have been raised from the dead. But they just returned to their everyday lives and went on to eventually die again. On Easter Sunday, Christ was resurrected. He rose in a real body, but in a glorified body. He defeated death and hell once and for all for each and every person who puts their faith in him. His resurrection guarantees the resurrection of every person who puts their faith in him. His resurrection guarantees that resurrection for us. Christ died, but death was not able to have the final word. Christ is risen from death. You will die. For if you believe in Christ, death will not have the final word for you either. For all who believe in Christ, the final word is resurrection life forever and ever. In Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, the Apostle Paul wrote, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The good news of the gospel is that Christ died for all the sin of all believers and he is risen from the dead. Believe that in your heart and confess it to others and you will be saved. Your sins will be forgiven. God will give you the gift of eternal life at no cost to you because Jesus paid it all in his death and resurrection. You will die unless the second coming of Christ happens before that. But you'll be raised from the dead in a resurrected, glorified body just like Jesus, never to die again. Those alive at his return will be changed without dying. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Believe this and be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Father God, I hold before you the few assembled here this morning, those that are watching live or later. Lord, I pray that you would look upon us, Lord God. See our needs, see our concerns, see our hopes, see our fears. Lord, I pray for each person, Lord God, that you would protect us and keep us, keep us healthy. Lord God, if there are any watching who are suffering with illness, we pray, Lord, that you would give them relief, give them healing, give them strength. Help them, Lord, to find hope in you. And Lord, as this serious time in our nation continues, Lord, we continue to pray that you would stop this virus in its track. Lord, we pray you'd bring an end to the spread of this virus. We pray that you would open the minds of our doctors, scientists, and researchers. Lord, enable them to find a vaccine, to find more effective treatments. And Father, we pray that you would cause there to be a release of the supplies that are needed to treat the ill. Bless those on the front lines. Lord, we continue to pray for the safety and the strength of our nurses and doctors, our EMTs, Everyone concerned with health care right now, Lord God. Be with them, Lord. Some are just overwhelmed at the point of despair. And Lord, we ask that you would bring them refreshing. Give them times where they're able to rest and someone else can step in and carry the load for them, Father. Bless our leaders, Lord God, with wisdom, with hearts of true compassion. Father, deliver our nation from the pettiness of politics. And Lord, raise up statesmen and stateswomen who will put the needs of this nation ahead of their political welfare. Lord God, deliver us from the pettiness that has plagued this country. And Lord, move on the hearts of Americans. Open our eyes, Lord, to our failings as individuals, our failings as a nation. And Lord, we pray for repentance. We pray for a true move of your Holy Spirit and for revival in the days to come. Lord, we lift all this before you, knowing it's too great for us, but it's not too great for the one who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins, Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, when his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon him, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Ensure the peace that you have a safe distance from one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with you.
I thank the people of Holy Spirit and Anglican Church for your faithfulness and giving through this time. And also praise God for that faithfulness. We bless these offerings in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All things come from you, O Lord. And of thine own heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to glorify your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and we sacrifice our praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. 
We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those of you at home who have consecrated bread with you, you take it now. Have it in your hands. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Take eat. I invite like those present to come forward reverently and yet respecting social distancing. Stop at the front and come up one at a time and take the bread. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you for joining us. The Lord be with you.